And of course, one of the things we can be proud about here in Washington State is we have a long and, and uh, respectable and respected tradition of trying to, respect, uh, to protect and preserve our own natural resources. And we have someone here who's in charge of part of that effort. Uh, Anita Edelsman is uh, an executive policy advisor with the Washington Department of Ecology. She has a long and industrial, uh, illustrious history of this. And Anita, thank you very much for being here. Thank you so much for the opportunity to come today and talk to you about the Department of Ecology and actually it's a collaborative effort with many other agencies relating to climate adaptation. Somebody? I need help on the uh... oh, Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. The, um, you heard already from several speakers before me um, about the impact other than ocean acidification, other than CO2 on um, the, our shoreline, our shellfish industry, our uh, coastal uh, ecosystem, and so on. What I'm going to do is try to cover really part of that second part we didn't talk about it today. So it's a little different from what you heard so far. So I'm going to talk about the response strategy that is underway right now, and we hope to have a draft, find a, a, another draft, at least we had one, to by the end of December. There are several things that form the foundation for our strategy. We have the science and a legal framework. The, in 2007, our governor issued an executive order setting some target for greenhouse gas reduction, but also directing the agency to start looking at what would be the first step to start adapting to the impact of climate change. So we did produce a report at that time, and there were some initial steps. We were not as informed with, uh, with science that actually came about in 2009. In 2009, the Climate Impact Group, with funding from our legislation, in partnership with the various state agencies, um, put out the 2009 assessment of the climate impact in Washington with a lot of really good information that formed the basis of a lot of what we actually have been working on. Uh, from a legal framework, I know we are talking about a lot about greenhouse gas, but the state does have some uh, targets on greenhouse gas and also dealing with a green economy. There's a lot of effort that is going on right now in green energy, um, jobs, but also continuing to reduce our greenhouse gas emission. In 2009, with the climate assessment report out, our legislature enacted a, what, what they call the State Agency Climate Leadership Act. The, the act itself had several provisions, but the most critical one is the, uh, was directing the Department of Ecology with six other state agencies to develop an integrated climate change response strategy. Um, the same year, 2009, our governor issued another executive order, and part of the executive order, she highlighted specifically the impact of sea level rise and the hydrological changes. Ocean acidification was still in the beginning of that, but it is a very important issue for us. The work of the response strategy is, done, is being done um, in collaboration between several state agencies. I think it's important to name the agencies. We have our Department of Health, Transportation, Commerce, Natural Resources, Fish and Wildlife, Ecology, I don't know if I missed the other ones. I hope not. So anyway, we several agencies that were uh, Department of Health. I'm going to quote, they will not be happy. <laughs> the, um, the, the seven agency worked with four um, advisory groups that involved a stakeholder representing various agencies, both at the federal level, state level, but also the industry, nonprofit organization, and many others. So we really had an effort for, you know, since, uh, since 
the July of 2009 focusing on the development of this strategy itself. So I think you heard already, and I'm not going to really repeat it, I'm just trying to put the, the, the um, response strategy in the context. Um, the, when we talk about ocean acidification, when we talk about our coastal ecosystem, they're really being hammered at least by this combined effect. Not only our existing you know, human cause stress, sediment, organic matter, nutrient, all the stuff that we human at least are creating through urbanization and development. Climate change, we didn't talk about it a lot today, but there is all the likelihood uh, that we are already seeing the temperature increasing. Sea level rise is going to be a very important impact on Washington. Flooding, uh, you know, beach erosion, others. A lot of those, several of those will actually also be adding stress to our shellfish and will be adding uh, exacerbate some of the problem from ocean acidification. And of course you heard about ocean acidification and Dick Feely did a very good job on ocean acidification 101 and maybe more than that. The, um, I wanted just to highlight some of the key goals and strategies that we have in our, uh, for, that we have developed. Number one, I think it's very important when we talk about adaptation, it's the same with ocean acidification, that we really integrate them with other goals, that they're not separate out there, that they are part of our environmental protection, our sustainable development economic growth. I mean, no question with Bill uh, Dewey's presentation to look at the impact of ocean acidification on the economy and potential loss of jobs. Adaptation, and so is anything we're going to do about ocean acidification, which I hope would be a lot of things, it will have to become a part, a standard part of what the agency, when they plan, they make decisions, and provide funding. One of the things that we always bring uh, as an example, we don't want to fund a multi-million dollar wastewater treatment facility if ultimately it's going to be impacted by sea level rise or some other uh, in, uh, extreme events. Um, strengthening um, our existing efforts, and I will go through that a little bit, but you um, saw at least, uh, Dick Feely had the last slide, he showed a, an, an incredible number of statutes and you know which are being administered both at the local, uh, tribal, state, many of public organization is how we really strengthen some of these existing efforts that are being implemented to reduce ex not only the existing stresses but also to make sure we're reducing vulnerability to climate change. Um, we talked a lot uh, today about communicating to science. I think what made the hardest job we're finding is how we take the scientific information and make sure it's communicated and is made accessible to public makers and the public uh, and the public in general in a form that they could use and they could actually relate to something maybe relating it back to their core um, activities. Um, uh, I'm not going to go through all of this, but what I wanted just to highlight is number one is really when we talk about ocean acidification is to focus on reducing and addressing the many stressors. One of the hardest things is the fact that we have a lot of fragmentation right now. Things are not really integrated and coordinated. So I think through the effort that we're talking about that ocean acidification, even climate adaptation, really forces us all to come together and bring these existing laws and tools to make sure that they are coordinated addressing the problems that not only we have today, but we anticipate uh, coming ahead of, in, the, in the coming years. Um, I listed some initiative, of course, a lot of you are aware of what the Future Sun Partnership is doing, and you know we have stormwater initiative and others, a lot of those are really, um, will help us reduce some of the impacts. Um, Building resilience to climate change in local communities is going to be very critical. And um, it's one where it does really involve our local jurisdiction with the local 
uh, communities, nonprofit organizations really take a lot of us to really try to do this. Um, we talked to, to, today and I'm not going to elaborate on advancing the monitoring of resource. This is going to be very critical. We still need to know more uh, than what we have, but it really is now that should not stop us from really moving ahead and acting at least on what we have in front of us today. So, thank you.